This is a show that will blow your mind, but it might not. It all depends. Do you like breakfast and a book with a friend? I am posing like this because it seems like a good way to start off a video, a Facebook Live video, any type of video. Um, good morning, guys. It is uh, a morning to me because I just woke up. Technically, it is afternoon, like 1230. Uh, so maybe it's not good morning. Maybe it's good afternoon because technically it's afternoon. And that's that's just how we do it, baby. Uh, so today, uh, uh, I am going to make uh, peanut butter and jelly. And uh, I'm going to cut up a nectarine. I already have tea made. I thought maybe I should make you all watch me boil water. Because that probably wouldn't be fun. Um, hey, Philip. Hey, Shauna. Uh, thanks for watching the show. I'm going to be silly and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And a uh, slice of a nectarine. So this is what we're doing. Uh, I do this weird show. If you like it, uh, you could uh, Venmo me money. And if you like it and don't have money, don't Venmo me money. Don't be a crazy person. Keep that money for the fucking apocalypse. So uh, I guess we should get started uh, making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich here in a minute. Um, I guess I should let some people get on. Uh, uh, let's see here. What should we do, guys? I don't want to waste too much time, but hey, let's look at what jelly and peanut butter I got. All right, let's do that. I've got Skippy Natural. Ooh, Shauna says she'll be having a PB&J for lunch. That's a good decision. Apricot Preserves. Skippy Natural Creamy Peanut Butter. I got the, the Skippy uh, Natural peanut butter because it tasted good, not because it's bad or something like that. Hey, this is uh, Chapo. Chapo! And that's my roommate. Hi, roommate. Chapo. Hey, Chapo. Oh, yeah, Chapo thinks he's going to get food. No, it's okay. Oh, look how cute he is. Oh, sorry, guys. We got distracted. We got distracted by doggies. You can't go wrong by getting distracted by doggies, right? Oh, now he wants to go in there. Chapo! Yeah! He's so cute. He's so cute. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Back to making PB&J. Here we go. The correct way to make PB&J. Let's see if we can pull this off. All right, so you're about to learn something, guys. You are about to learn something. PB and J, right? We got the PB. Peanut butter. We're spreading the peanut butter. We're spreading the peanut butter. Spread this peanut butter. Don't be, don't be keeping it in one pile like a weirdo. Unless you're going to just spoon it directly into your mouth. So let's see what we got here. You see, we get it all the way to the edges, of course, because we're not barbarians here. Maybe you're saying to yourself, this doesn't seem like a lot of peanut butter. Well, you're about to learn something. All right, see, we got the peanut butter. Uh-oh, what's going on? More peanut butter? But where are we putting that more peanut butter? Where are we putting the more peanut butter? I'll tell you where we're putting the more peanut butter. On the second piece of bread. That's right, you guys. You always, always, always make sure that you put peanut butter on both pieces of bread. You know why, guys? You know why you put peanut butter on both pieces of bread, you guys? Because then the jelly... The jelly doesn't soak into the bread like like the worst thing that could happen to peanut butter and jelly is when the jelly soaks into the bread and then the bread is all wet and weird this way it doesn't do that so you guys let's see here we got 
the jelly. I'm gonna put this in the, the jelly. I wouldn't normally do that, but I'm the only one who eats this, so it has no effect on anybody else. Oh, Adam, you do the same thing? Yes, Adam says, uh, my friend Adam Redmond says he does the same thing. See, peanut butter on both sides. This is how we do it, baby. Now, I have a little bit of a thing because I eat my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in a specific way. Oh, we gotta get enough jelly here. You may hear some noises, because my roommates are up and about doing things like grown-ups but mostly we are all stuck here so so now I put the jelly obviously all the way to the edges don't be don't be tripping but then another key thing is that I make sure there's a piece of apricot or whatever jelly that I have right in the middle you see that and because what I'm going to do is I am going to eat around the edges and then leave that last perfect bite in the middle. Um, now, let's get a knife and slice some delicious... Adam said he uh, literally just had a PB&J and tried it your way and it made a lot of sense. Oh yeah, the eating down the around the ends, uh, the sides, it makes the most sense. So now we're going to slice up a, a nectarine. No, pretty exciting. I don't know why I'm doing the Jaws sound for the knife, but I think it makes sense. Uh-oh, this nectarine looks like it might be a little overripe, but you don't waste food in the corona apocalypse, guys. I'm going to eat these nectarines anyways. I don't know about you guys, I cut half and half and then the small sides off and then I have this situation. Bam! Now if you want to make your plate look cool, you do the, you could do something fancy schmancy. Um, I do not cut my peanut butter and jelly in a triangle because then it is not um, done correctly. This looks good. Check this out, guys. Ooh, fancy. Mmm. Then you lift the knife off. Obviously, don't be a barbarian and not lick your knife. Oh, did somebody count? I hope so. All right, guys, here we go. Uh. Ha ha! You've now made it to the breakfast nook. I don't know why I said that like Dracula. All right, guys, we made it to the breakfast nook. We got, uh, we got Ray, we got Leia, and Han and Carbonite. We got, um, Adam Redmond said I counted as far as my California public education would allow. Uh, so that's, uh, 22. I don't know why I picked that number. Hmm. I guess the nectarines aren't overripe. All right, guys. Now we will test out the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't know why I'm eating in front of you guys. But this is how we do it, baby. I woke up with that song in my head. So that's what you're going to hear in this video all through it. Mmm, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Okay, guys. Today's book is Bedlam's Bard.
Uh, it's by Mercedes Lackey and Ellen Guan, maybe? G-U-O-N. Um, Mercedes Lackey is more famous for the uh, Valdemar uh, series, where there's this land where people, these horses are the chosen, they choose people, um, and then they um, protect the land of Valdemar, and they have a psychic link. A lot of times they can talk, there's mages, there's all types of different like people who have specific magic things that they do. Um, and it's lots of fun. It's a very silly book full of funny stuff, gay characters. There's just like uh, tons of kick-ass women. It's a great, this, this author is awesome. So this one is a little bit different though. So let's read the back. Eric Banyan was a talented musician whose lady had left him singing the blues and playing his flute in a deserted corner of the Renaissance Fair. He couldn't have known that the desperate sadness of his music would free Corendil, a young elven noble from the magical prison he'd been languishing in for centuries. Suddenly, Eric had no time to be in the dumps, as he had to help his new acquaintance fight against the evil elf lord who had first imprisoned Corendil and now seeks to conquer all of California. And that was only the beginning. There's three of these books, I believe. Maybe a couple more. Um, so, uh, the basic plot of this one is, yeah, just like what it said. This guy accidentally wakes up an elf, and then he spends, like, a long time traveling all through California uh, and fighting this other elf guy, finding out that he has his own magical ability through the power of playing music! Come on. That's pretty cool. That's like straight-ass straight, straight -ass Dungeons and Dragons shit, you know? Charisma. Inspiring people with the gongs and the singing and the business. Um, so that's, that's what's so fun about this book. Also because it's based in real California. So like uh, it's, it's based in like real life and adding in. They call that urban fantasy. Uh, it's the lingo, you guys. Urban fantasy. So basically meaning that it's in an urban real life community. But uh, magic is involved uh, in a sort of secret way or in a knowing way. Hey, Lance! Lance is uh, my best friend in the whole world. I've known Lance since I was like four or five years old. He knows I've been reading these Mercedes Lackey books for uh, as long as I possibly could read, basically. So um, let's open up the book. Uh, you guys know this, who are, who've watched before, if you haven't watched before, what I like to do is when I'm going to read an author that I don't know, because uh, I like to go and look for books just for random authors. So the way I do that is I'll go and I'll look at it, I'll look at a cover, I'll be like, all right, let's try it out. And I open up the book in the middle of the book and then start reading it to get an idea if I like the style of writing. So let's do that. Outside, the first hints of sunlight were breaking through the clouds overhead. There were only moments left until true dawn. Eric and Beth, walking in silence, picked a careful path through the debris on the swimming pool deck. Beth, Eric began hesitantly. When Phil called out to Ly Lila, did you see? He stopped, feeling as if someone was standing just behind him, peering over his shoulder. Somebody very close, close enough to touch. Then he screamed at something wet and oily coiled around his ankle, yanked his feet out from under him and dragged him backwards. He thrashed, trying to free himself and caught a glimpse of something, something huge and dark and dripping, topped by a rearing equine head with glittering red eyes and distended fangs. Then the thing slammed him down on the concrete, knocking the breath and wits from him. His flute case went flying in one direction as he was yanked in another toward the pool. Beth, he shrieked, hearing her scream echoing behind him. Then the water closed over him, black and icy cold, as ice as the scaled flesh against his bare skin. He struggled against the inhuman grip, already knowing it was hopeless, trying to reach the surface to breathe, feeling the darkness closing in around him as every second ticked past. Good writing. That's what I'm talking about. Mercedes Lackey's writing is action-packed. It moves quickly. Uh, the thing that I also really like about Mercedes Lackey is she gets feelings. Like, she does a great job uh, with... The person's in head uh, emotions like you really get a feeling for how they're acting sometimes they're acting a certain way and you can tell they're acting that way because they feel emotionally um, and the descriptions that she uh, adds into people's feelings are just like wonderful and well thought out so like i said 
uh, like I've been saying, you should be checking out as many books as you can, whatever literature, screenplays, read everything that you possibly can during this quarantine. It's giving you the advantage to do that. Um, you could read some nonfiction. Um, at some point, I'll be doing one of the nonfiction books I have, which is something along the lines of like how to write stand up or any of those type of things. Uh, but lately, I've just been talking about the fun stuff because um, that's another thing we need to add in. Li Mercedes Lackey, she helps you live in a different world while you're reading these books. It's one of the best things about her. Uh, so you should check out Bedlam's Bard for sure and the other books that go along with it. They're great. Um, and also her Valdemar series. Uh, her Valdemar series is ongoing. She may be one of the most prolific authors of all time as well, by the way. She's written so many books. Um, and, uh, you know, so I guess that's basically it, guys. Be out there helping each other out. Uh, if you want to donate to the Swallow Fund, it's Ron, uh, at Ron-Swallow for Venmo or Ron Swallow and PayPal. Uh, I'm doing these shows. Oh, tonight, if you're listening right now, tonight I'm going to do a live stand-up show in my rec room in front of a white screen thing that we have. Uh, my roommates will be there sitting six feet apart, and I'll be doing Facebook Live. Um, and if you want to buy tickets, you can do those things. Or the other thing that you can do is join my Patreon for my Nerd Goat podcast. You should also check out my Nerd Goat podcast. It is awesome. It's the best thing I've ever done, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, we basically have people on to talk about their favorite fictional characters of all time. Uh, so, you know, we've done from Liz Lemon to Elaine uh, from Seinfeld. We've done from... Uh, Daredevil to Darkseid, you know, so we've done a gambit of characters uh, and some, some people from The Simpsons, a bunch of different things, uh, Superintendent Chalmers, for instance. Uh, so if you like being entertained, you should definitely, we even did Skeletor, you guys, with Rick Wood. And if you haven't seen Rick Wood uh, do things, check out everything that Rick Wood does. He's uh, unbelievably talented and hilarious. So that's all, guys. Be out there supporting your friends. Uh, don't go outside, stay inside, read books, uh, send virtual hugs. Uh, we're all in this together. We're going to get through it. We're going to all come out the other end and fix everything that's fallen apart. And, uh, and, and, you know, we'll get it. We'll get through it. We'll drink tea. We'll eat PB and J. And then one day we'll be out hugging each other in real life. Looking forward to that day. Thank you guys for listening to Cooking, Breakfast, and a Book with Swallow. That was very dramatic. Bye, guys.